Good evening. The time is 7.36. I apologize for running just a few minutes late. Um, but this is the public hearing and regular business of mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia for Monday, May 14th, 2018. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first, we have the invocation by Bishop Jerry Hutchins with the Kingdom Now Church. Shall we pray? God, our Father, it is with such humility and thanksgiving that we come before your throne tonight. We thank you for this gathering of your people. We pray now that you would bless us as we shall meet together. We pray for unity. We pray for strength. We pray for direction. We pray for this council and the leaders of this city, that you just bless them individually as well as collectively. We invoke your presence here tonight. We ask that whatever you desire us to do, that you give us the guidance to do it, give us the wisdom to undertake this business in the manner in which pleases you. Be glorified in this meeting tonight. We thank you for the opportunity, and we bless you for all that you have done in our lives. It is in your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Hutchins. Uh, Bishop Hutchins is actually, um, they've just started their church the Kingdom Now Church has just started meeting at South Gwinnett High School in April. They started and we had a great conversation and he's a South Gwinnett grad. 19, can I say that? 75 was it? 74, from, graduate from South Gwinnett High School. So we're glad to have them here and worshiping here in the city. Next we have the Pledge to the Flag. We have the South Gwinnett High School Junior ROTC Color Guard with the pledge led by junior ROTC cadet Alexander Gabriel. Uh, just a note, Alexander was recently selected to receive an Army ROTC scholarship worth up to $100,000 for tuition and educational fees. He will also receive an allowance of up to $1,500 per year and $1,200 per year for books. The South Gwinnett Junior ROTC is led by senior Army instructor, Lieutenant Colonel Nate Flagler, and the South Gwinnett Junior ROTC program recently received the honor unit with distinction label, the highest accreditation level that an Army ju uh, Junior ROTC program can receive across the country. We are really blessed to have this group of, of young people here in our city and we love it when they come to our council meetings.
Now we have our first item under ceremonial matters. We have several of those tonight. I will administer the oath of office to Board of Appeals member Whitney Young. If she would step forward. Okay, next we have recognition of the 2018 Teachers of the Year. Councilmember Linsky. It's with great pleasure that I read this proclamation honoring the 2017-18 Teachers of the Year. All of these teachers are from the Brookwood Cluster, the South Winnet Cluster, as well as the Shiloh Cluster. Whereas from preschool to high school, devoted teachers prepare all of us for our future. And whereas anyone who works, dreams, imagines, creates, or contributes to society owes thanks to a teacher who has provided help, knowledge, and inspiration along the way. And whereas it is appropriate that teachers be recognized for their dedication and commitment to educating our children. And whereas in 1971, the Georgia Department of the Education began the Georgia Teachers of the Year program to spotlight the teaching profession and to recognize the commitment and devotion of outstanding public school teachers at each school. And whereas to be selected as Teacher of the Year, one must be a certified classroom teacher who is an exceptionally dedicated, knowledgeable, and skilled teacher who inspires students of all backgrounds with the ability to learn who has the respect and admiration of students, parents, and colleagues, and who plays an active role in not just the school, but in the community as a whole. Whereas the Teacher of the Year is nominated and selected by their fellow teachers at their local schools as professional recognition of their instructional expertise and dedication for motivating their students to reach their full learning potential. And whereas the city of Snellville is honored to recognize the 2017-2018 Teachers of the Year. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, Barbara Bender, Mayor Pro Temp of the city of Snellville, Georgia, where everybody is proud to be somebody, do hereby join with our city council and the citizens of Snellville to congratulate the 2017-2018 Teachers of the Year 
and to recognize their outstanding service to their students and encourage them to continue to be one of Gwinnett County's finest educators. Proclaimed this 14th day of May, 2018. We have prepared special proclamations for each teacher, so please, um, when I call your name, please come forward. Jessica Askew. Anderson Livesey Elementary School, science teacher, grades five through, I'm sorry, grades five through, K through five. I need my glasses, I'm kind of embarrassed. From Anniston Elementary School, Vermeerly Cosme, special education teacher, moderate intellectual abilities, grades K and grade one. Britt Elementary School, Nancy McClellan Falaco. And she is the gifted education teacher, grade three. From Brookwood Elementary School, Catherine K, third grade. Congratulations. From Centerville Elementary School, Vivanitha Clark, fourth grade. From Craig Elementary School, special education teacher, autism spectrum disorder, grades K through two, Doris Rainierson. Cruz Middle School, Tanya Dudman, physical science teacher, grade eight. Grace Snell Middle School, Carla McClendon, math teacher, grade six.
McGill Elementary School, Anna Price, special education teacher, autism spectrum disorder, grades four and five. She could not be with us tonight. And we'll mail her proclamation. Okay, Norton Elementary School, Kathy Spruell, instructional coach and specialist, mathematics grades K through five. Shiloh Elementary School, Julianne Nelson, instructional coach, mathematics, grades five, I'm sorry, K through five. Who could not be with us also tonight? Make sure they get their proclamation. Okay. From Shiloh High School, Brenda King, math, math teacher, grades nine through 12. I'm still afraid of math. Shiloh Middle School, Patrick Reifsteck, health and PE teacher, grades six through eight. And I saved my best for last, South Gwinnett High School. Kimmy Range, career and technical education teacher, grades nine through 12. <laughs> Congratulations to all our teachers. Hang in there, there's two more weeks to go. We can do it. Okay, next item is the induction of the Snellville Youth Commission members. Council Member Linsky. Oh, that's me again, okay. The Snellville Youth Commission is a youth leadership organization that seeks to prepare our young people for a lifetime of public and community service. SYC students are selected by an adult advisory board based on a rigorous application and interview process. SYC brings students together from three area high schools, Brookwood, Shiloh, and South Gwinnett. This year, we welcome 10 new students to our organization. Will the following students please come forward? You will shortly be sworn in by the Mayor Pro Temp. Keval Amin. Diamond Etchison Slaughter. Faith Williams. Liam Casimir. Mackay Cannon. Autumn Lewis. Irene Juresh. Esther Nadewa.
Olan Ray Waju, Ade Anju. Caleb Wack, Mayor Pro Temp will now issue your oath. I'm going to be quiet now. Next, one more ceremonial matter. We have the presentation of flag certificates by the Button Gwinnett Chapter Sons of the American Revolution. Welcome up Bill Palmer and his group. On behalf of Button Gwinnett Chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution, it gives me great honor to present the city of Snellville, uh, the National Society of the Sons of the American Revolution, a certificate of commendation uh, in recognition of exemplary, exemplary patriotism and the display of the flag of the United States of America on this day, 14 May 2018. Thank you very much. At the same time, we would like to give the same proclamation to the Snellville Police Department. Dated the same day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Photobomb. 
the Button Gwinnett chapter, Sons of the American Revolution, have really um, added a lot to our Veterans Day and Memorial Day celebration. And I think they're going to come out 4th of July this year, too? Memorial Day, Memorial Day for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but they come out, a lot of times they'll do the 21 gun salute uh, with their muskets, and uh, they've got all the costumes from the revolution, and it's, it's really, um, it really does add a lot to our, to our events. Okay, now we'll have the approval of the minutes for the April 23rd, 2018 meetings. Motion to approve the minutes of the April 23rd, 2018 meetings. There's a motion to approve, is there a second? A second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. We have no invited guests, no committee or department reports. So we'll approve the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the agenda, May 14th, 2018. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. So motion and a second, all in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Five in favor, none opposed. Next, we'll open our public hearing. Under item A, we have our first reading for CUP 18-02, consideration and action on application by Tony Dawson and Maine McGee Investment LLC for a conditional use permit for a fuel station with convenience store and request for variances from the Snellville Code of Ordinances for the, plus or, for the 0.5 plus or minus acre property zoned uh, BG district and located at 2305 Scenic Highway Southwest, Snellville, Georgia. This will be a first reading on this uh, CUP and for anyone who's interested, this is the old Sims gas station that's down at Henry Clower and 124. Is there a motion to waive the first reading? Yes, motion to waive the first reading on CUP 18-02. Place it on the agenda of the June 11th meeting. Thank you, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Item B, we have a second reading, ZOA 18-01, consideration and recommendation on amendment to section 9.8, Office Professional District OP of Article 9, Schedule of District Regulations of the 2001 Zoning Ordinance for Business and Driving Schools. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Council and Public, for being here tonight. Um, over the past several years, we'd have some business owners that wanted to establish some smaller type uh, training and business schools and even driving schools in the city uh, and the Office Professional Zoning Districts. Currently, though, our zoning ordinance only allows for these type of uses in our more uh, commercial districts, our business general or general business uh, districts. Even more recently, we've had some interest on Lenora Church for a smaller driving school to locate in a couple of properties that have been uh, out of commerce for quite some time, have sitting and uh, deteriorated, and uh, currently our, our code doesn't allow for that. So in order to kind of mitigate some of those factors, we've requested that we allow these type of business schools, training schools, CNA nursing schools, as long as they don't exceed 5,000 square feet so that the scale is smaller, um, they have to meet the parking codes, and um, that's what we'd like to ask for approval today. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Mm -hmm. Does council have any questions for Mr. Thompson? Thank you. This is a public hearing, so we will open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to come up and speak about this um, amendment to section 9.8, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I will close the public comment. And is there a motion? Motion to approve ZOA 18-01 as read by the Mayor Pro Tem. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is five in favor and none opposed. 
Next, we have item C, second reading ZOA 18-02, consideration and recommendation on amendment to section 6.2, definitions of article six, interpretation and definitions in section 7.1, accessory uses or structures of article seven of the 2001 zoning ordinance, general, general provisions for portable on-demand storage containers or pods. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, another exciting topic tonight with uh, pods. Basically, uh, over the years, we've seen the use of these increase. Um, some are in driveways, some are besides the side of the house for unknown time periods or un unregulated time periods. So our uh, code enforcement officers ask that we put uh, an ordinance on the books <clears throat> that allows a fair amount of time uh, for individuals that need pods, whether it be due to uh, remodel, natural disaster, um, insurance claim, or just to move uh, so that they don't proliferate and, and stay for longer periods of time. So what you have before you is an ordinance that does just that. It sets the parameters of where they can be placed, how long they can be placed, and how they can be used so they're not used in ways um, that uh, we don't want like uh, somebody running a business out of one or someone inhabiting one or something like that or have them in the street. Um, these place them in the front yard and limit the time period based on uh, what uh, the occurrence of the pod request is for. If it's moving, it's 30 days up to 60 days. There's also a point where a permit is required and that's after the um, beginning phase, which is a free basically 30 day or 60 day period where they're allowed to have it without a permit. And that fee, if it's not included in the building permit fee, is uh, $25. Okay, Mr. Thompson, so if somebody orders a pod to be delivered, do they have to come to the city first? No, uh, basically they get a 30 day grace period. So, um, and that's really would be based on a complaint or uh, we won't actually have them log them or anything. Uh, 30 days, if we get a complaint that's been sitting there too long, that's when the clock kind of starts for them to set off the time period, but we won't uh, request them to come to us first for the first 30 days. Okay. Did any other council members have a question for Mr. Thompson? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Thompson, I, I read in there, I believe, I just want you to clarify for me that in a commercial area, these cannot be on the front of the building or actually visible from the street, is that correct? Because That's correct. And I know I've seen them used mm -hmm. at like holiday time yeah, for some businesses. Yeah, we had one at the Dollar General, and this ordinance really doesn't change anything in the commercial ordinance, but uh, they're basically portable accessory structures, which are basically tractor trailer, uh, tr cargo trailers, and those are required to be behind the building and okay. screened, and uh, we've had to enforce some of those in the past as well. Thank you. Dollar General, for sure. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Mr. Thompson. This is a public hearing on this item, so we will open the floor to public comment. If anyone would like to come up and address the council on, on this uh, amendment, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. No one wants to talk about pods? <laughs> okay, so I will close the public comment, seeing none, and ask for a motion. Uh, motion to approve ZOA 18-02. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by right, raising your right hand. That is five in favor, none opposed. Okay, we have nothing on our consent agenda. No old business. We have under new business, uh, item A, provide citizens the opportunity to submit written and oral comments on the proposed operating budget of the City of Snellville for fiscal year 2018-2019. Mr. Sanders, you want to make a comment or two? Sure. Madam Pro Tem and Council and uh, members of the public, we have advertised this evening for a uh, public hearing on our first reading of the fiscal year 19 city budget. Um, the staff and I bring before you a, a budget in the amount, a balanced budget, 
in the amount of $13,435,809 that we're proposing to spend uh, beginning July 1 of this year going through June 30th of 2019. Um, that is about a 4.6% net increase over the FY18 budget or about $529,000. Uh, we were able to uh, um, work through a, a, a very difficult budget year. Uh, the city entered into a, a service delivery agreement with Gwinnett County uh, eight years ago, and uh, uh, we, were, we received a public safety reimbursement check for $221,000 every year until next year. Uh, we just received our last one. So we started out with this budget with a $221,000 hole that we had to, uh, had to make up for. Uh, fortunately, we've had good growth in several revenue items. Our, our tax digest continues to be strong. Uh, there are some notes uh, on the, the back table. I'd, I'd ask for you to uh, pick that up, pick those up if you're interested. It, it's uh, our, our projected digest for 2018 is gonna be somewhere around $851 million. Our digest has not been at that number since 2008. Ten, it took us 10 years to recover from the recession. Uh, and I will say that our millage rate, our proposed millage rate, the, in, to, to keep this budget balanced is the same as last year. It would be the same as the last four years. That's what we are projecting. The millage will not be set until the end of June or July when we receive our actual digest. But we believe it'll be in that, in that same area as it was in 2008. And I, I just want to let everybody know our millage rate has been greatly reduced since uh, since that 2008 year. So we are uh, um, we're looking at at good digest growth. Um, there are several increases that what I, I call non discretionary in this budget things that we really don't have control over. Our buildings are aging. Uh, we've had to add about forty five thousand dollars for facilities maintenance. Uh, sanitation is going to go up by $55,000 with a uh, cost of living increase for our carrier. Uh, planning and development in our consultant line item, because we're doing our comp plan, we're finishing our UDO, yeah, we are, uh, we're projecting a $30,000 increase in our consultant budget there. So these are things that, these are items that we really don't have control over, but we're meeting those needs. Um, Cap on the capital needs side, everybody is usually concerned about street resurfacing and stormwater projects. Uh, I feel like we're taking care of those very well with almost $700,000 for street resurfacing and uh, right at $650,000 for needed stormwater projects. Um, a couple of, couple of very positive notes, I think, uh, which show how strong our economy is. Our occupation tax has grown increased for the last five years. We project it to do so again next year. Uh, we have a strong business climate in, in Snellville. Uh, our building permits our building permits went through the roof this year. They, they quadrupled. Uh, when you think about places like the Hampton Inn, Sheridan East Side that permitted construction this year, we won't have that next year, but we still we, we project that we'll have strong residential and slightly less strong uh, uh, commercial growth. And uh, just uh, uh, one thing to know in our recreation programs, the, the revenues from our recreation programs are up over 25% over the last three years, We're trying to be a little, uh, a little more entrepreneurial in our rec department and uh, leasing our facilities. So I, uh, um, I, I would present this to the mayor and council for a first reading. Um, as I said, it has been advertised. The budget will be available if anybody has any questions and uh, we'll hope for uh, a second reading and adoption on June the 11th. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Now this is um, under new business to uh, um, provide you the opportunity to come up if you have any questions or comments on this proposed budget. Please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Okay, I don't see anyone who wants to ask any questions tonight, but uh, feel free as you're reviewing the, the budget, it is online, it is on the website yes. to review. Um, so if you have any questions on the budget, please feel free to um, contact any of your council members or contact Mr. Sanders and he'll be happy to respond. 
Okay, next then we'll have item B is our first reading, re reading, <laughs> our first reading for ordinance 2018-06 for adoption of the fiscal year 2018-2019 budget for each fund of the city of Snellville, Georgia, appropriating the amount shown in each budget as expenditures expenses, adopting the several items of revenue anticipations and prohibiting expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding available. Is there a motion? Motion to approve ordinance 2018-06 as read by Mayor Pro Tem Bender. Mr. Emanuel, this is for the for the waving, waving the first I'm reading. Sorry. <laughs> motion to waive the first reading. <laughs> of and, uh, ordinance 2018-06 and place on the and place place on the agenda for second reading for june 11th so there's a motion to waive the first reading and place on the agenda the june 11th agenda is there a second second there's a motion and a second all in favor please signify by raising your right hand that is five in favor and none opposed so our schedule, just so that everybody understands, is we hope for final adoption on, at the June 11th meeting. So if you do have questions or comments, please let us know before then. Item C, we have consideration and action on approval of the revised fee schedule for planning and development. Um, what this is uh, for the revised fee schedule, this is just to provide for the $25 fee for the pods, where we just approve that ordinance update is there a motion motion to approve the revised fee schedule for planning and development with reference to the pod $25 permit fee there's a motion is there a second second there's a motion and a second all in favor please signify by raising your right hand that is five in favor and none opposed that ends our regular business meeting. So we'll move to council reports. Council Member Marmel. I uh, want to start off by reminding everybody that early voting is still going on until Friday, 7 to 7 at your precinct location, county. And to go vote on May 22nd, there's a bunch of races, a bunch of judicial races, executive, all a bunch of people running. And then uh, I missed the last meeting. I had to be there for my sister, so I couldn't come to the meeting. But I did want to be here because I wanted to talk about the bidding process and what was voting on last go around. And so I want to talk about a little bit about that because I don't think a lot of people really knew the process and all that stuff. So basically it started out with uh, two county representatives, two city representatives, and then one council. That was me on the panel. And then we basically looked at, I think it was eight. Was it eight people or ten people? I think it was eight. Nine. Nine. All right, so it was nine at first, and then five, and then it was basically three, and then one eventually is what it boiled down to. But the last one wasn't my choice, but it was what the panel wanted. So, And I just wanted to, if anybody has any questions about anything with the process or anything about the particulars and the details, because a lot of it is really going to set the tone of what the future is now is going to be in the downtown, because this first uh, joint library municipal market building that's going to be built hopefully within a year is when it starts being built, is going to set the tone for what future growth is going to come into the style and stuff like that. So if anybody has any questions at all, come ask me because I was part of the whole process. So I can tell you anything about what was going on in there. And also to keep an eye out on it and to keep tabs on it because I know the council's definitely on it and they're watching it too and stuff like that, but it is different parties and different groups that, and they have different interests, and my interests are the city and the people that live here. So uh, I'm just telling everybody to keep eyes on, on that project and make sure it's what you want because it's gonna set the tone for all the future development that's gonna eventually end up coming into the downtown area. And that's basically it. The, yeah, that's basically it. Council Member Linsky. Special congratulations to all of the individuals who volunteered for Snellville Days as well as our Parks and Recs Department for their incredible amount of hard work. It was an outstanding celebration. I think the city definitely enjoyed it. I know I did. It was amazing how much money I could spend in just uh, about an hour 
really, that's no new thing for me. I also want to mention uh, the additional teachers of the year who could not be with us tonight. Um, it's a busy time of the year. Gwyn Oaks Elementary School teacher Tracy Polinski, head elementary school fourth and fifth grade gifted math and science teacher Doug Dobler, also Brookwood High School AP bi biology teacher Don John Shavado, who is also, I'm told, known as Big Slim. Take her their word for it. Five Forks Middle School, Amanda Newton, seventh grade math teacher. Partee Elementary School, Rashada Potter Johnson, kindergarten, bless her. Rosebud Elementary School teacher, Angela Nichols, third grade, as well as Snellville Middle School teacher, Kenneth Golden, sixth grade math. Unfortunately, they could not join us tonight. We have two weeks remaining in the school year, and it's an incredibly busy time. So. Please keep all teachers, students, and especially parents in your thoughts and prayers as we get through the next couple of weeks and head towards summer vacation. Council Member Emanuel. Just want to remind everybody with school getting out in a couple of weeks, there'll be more kids on the street as you're driving through the city. Just be extra careful because you never know when one might run out in front of you. So especially the teachers. Yeah, well, teachers. Teachers we can do without, but the kids we need to protect. <laughs> Council Member Schultz. Well, you know, every meeting I have to give some community garden update because it is absolutely amazing what's accomplished at that garden between meetings. So I have some uh, photos for you that because I know some of you have probably never been there before, and I just want you to see what goes on. First of all, this was the uh, community garden booth at Snellville Days. They sold um, plants, vegetable and flower plants, that they had grown in the greenhouse at the garden. They raised $665 at Snellville Days, which was more than they expected. So we were just very pleased with the... Um, results of that. Then the next um, picture, this is Wes uh, Nettleton. He's one of the master gardeners that works with us and puts in hours and hours and hours at that garden. Here he is at South Gwinnett High School. He works with a class at South Gwinnett. It's a, a, um, a, a nutrition class and they're planting sweet potato plants now because this is the time to plant them to be able to harvest them in in the fall so he's working with the students there teaching them about sweet potatoes i guess and the next uh, photo shows a picture of them planting the sweet potatoes this is in a bed on the school grounds that um, that they have there the next photo shows another one of our master gardeners there in the green shirt this is martha um, whitman and she um, taught a rain barrel class within the last week or so. Um, she and another one of our gardeners went all the way to Mapleton to get, I'm not sure how many rain barrels they picked up there, but they drove, they got a trailer, they drove, these two ladies drove these rain barrels back in a trailer on 285. It was amazing, and, um, and then Eileen held a class where we sold the rain barrels and the equipment to make like um, a faucet on the rain barrel, and we sold those for $35 each, and that included the um, class, and we raised, I think it was $225 with our rain barrel class, so just in the last couple weeks, we've raised well over eight hundred dollars for for the garden um the next photo shows wes nettleton again i told you he's at the garden hours and hours and hours every week here he is managing a rototiller we have a calendar garden at the um at the garden that has something in bloom most of the year 
Well, he decided that we're going to extend that along the one area of the fence where we don't have a calendar garden yet. So he got out there with a rototiller. He said in his email to us that it uh, beat him up pretty, pretty good, but um, there he is, rototilling up the ground there. And then the last um, picture, that is the calendar garden on the other side of the entry to the garden. And I just wanted you to get some idea of what it looks like and what he wants to extend on the on the other side of the entry gate so i just like to keep you all informed about what's going on there because i'm just i continue to be so impressed with what the folks working at that garden accomplish week after week after week thank you council member schultz it really is a tribute to the hard work of everyone who who works out there at the garden um, I think it's a great amenity for the city, a really great attraction. And now it's featured on the uh, Georgia Municipal Association's Innovation in Georgia website um, as one of the outstanding projects that have happened so that now cities across the, the state can uh, take a look at what we're doing here in Snellville. Um, just to comment a little too on uh, Roger Marmel's comments on the, the downtown planning and the design there, and um, that kind of leads right into the comprehensive plan. As he says, you just need to keep your eyes and ears peeled on what we're doing in the downtown, and, and as designs and things start coming up, there will be public hearings. Um, there will be public meetings. We'll be putting things out on social media and also on the website. Um, and that, in conjunction with our comprehensive plan, uh, there will be public hearings, uh, some charrettes, or some workshop opportunities for people to come in here. They'll also be scheduling some, um, some days at the farmer's market and some of the other events in the city so that we can be out uh, catching people where you are um, so that you can give your input on what you would like to see happen in the city and what kind of future development um, options you would like to see in the city for the next 20 <coughs> years. Um, so keep tabs on that as well because those will be some opportunities uh, for you to give your input. So that is all for my report. Um, so we'll open the floor to public comment. If anyone has anything they would like to say, please come up and to the microphone and give your name and address. I see no one. I, know. I thought Marcy was pulling together some things to come up. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. So motion is second. All in favor? 5-0. We're out. And the time is 830.